What's up, guys? This is the It Ain't Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Dom Sharansky. Let's get it. I'm here today with my friend Gian Pablico. Gian is an expert in team building and community. Currently, he is the active director for brand and product for Lululemon's IDEA program, focused on inclusion, diversity, equity, and action. Previously, GN has had multiple roles within brand and community, working internally and externally with individuals on personal development, social awareness, and team dynamics. He, was work, he has worked with many individuals, including those from, but not limited to, the MLB, the NFL, the NBA, Olympic athletes, corporate executives, and the like. More important than all that, Gian is a father and a husband, and you will still catch him hosting fitness pop-ups in gyms all around the city. Really excited to have Gian on the podcast. Tune in. Gian, what's up, man? What up? Whoa, what a bio. Who wrote that? I've <laughs> <laughs> never heard that. That's crazy. Hey, Thanks for having me. Did I, did I do all right? That's perfect. Cool, Thank cool, you. Cool, cool, Thank you. Um, yeah, no, so I'm really excited to, to have you here, and I think like with that little intro, people you know, know a little bit about what you do, but we don't know where you come from. Okay. So, yeah, if you could tell us a little bit about maybe the young GN. The young GN, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, thank you for the the introduction. The young GN, yeah, I moved moved to uh, Canada when I was seven years old. Um, And it was a pretty interesting, tumultuous, like, fun childhood growing up in Richmond, Steveston. And that's where I, you know, pretty much kind of learned a lot of the things related to, you know, what I wanted to be when I grew up, right? Because I moved, I moved out of my house like pretty early, like at the summer of grade nine, I moved to, yeah, my, my best friend's couch that moved. uh, And then after that moved on to uh, like my own housing, uh, worked at an Irish pub uh, for the rest of my high school career. So you can imagine a, a young teenager with his own house, like, yeah. The parties were definitely in my house, right. so experienced and saw things, but at the same time had responsibility with, uh, you know, with family still, you know, connected with my, with my younger brothers and sisters, with my mom, and then trying to sustain myself. So I think a lot of the stuff that I learned at that very young age propelled me into, you know, essentially trying to support the young people that, um, that were a part of that. I think supporting the older the, or the younger version of myself, right? I, I saw opportunities to pass on all the uh, the support that I got when I was young. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the trajectory of work that I was diving into was related to young people, team development, and then of course supporting parents as well. Cool. Yeah. And you're saying you got here at like age seven. Yeah. Um, that's from the Philippines? Yes, sir. Okay, so what was, what was that experience like, just like your first arrival in Vancouver? Was I it mean, Vancouver? it was, it was it was cold yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it you, i mean it's it's kind of stereotypical but i came from like the manila just madness busy like populated pollution and also joy and like laughter mm-hmm. right and so i spent summers in in uh, my my um, grandfather's duck farm so like surrounded by animals over the summer surrounded by mangoes guavas and and just like living wild and free and then in the during the school year in the city in the philippines and so then when i came to canada i was like just huge culture shock of just not only like language but just the amount of space a lot and the amount of like quietness so i was actually afraid of still kind of still am afraid of like open spaces i'm used to tight spaces where you can hear everything uh everything is tight everything is noisy so i'm like I live right now in North Van where there's tons of woods, tons of greenery and space. And I'm honestly like, sometimes I'm still like, yo, like this is scary. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my mind isn't like trained to like be comfortable in those situations. But when you put me in a city, when you put me with tons of people with houses so close together that you can hear the person next to you, like mm-hmm. speak, like that's my, that's more of what I'm used to. So it was definitely a culture shock on that sense. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, any sports? Sports. Yeah. I mean, stereotypically in the philippines you grew up like playing basketball okay even without shoes or you you grew up boxing i remember like in the festivals people would just bring out boxing gloves and then the kids would just fight mm. right and then the other side because you know the philippines is re- very connected to like u.s american culture like basketball was 
that was it, boxing is ba- and basketball. So funny enough, when I moved to, uh, to Vancouver, even though I, I knew English a little bit, what I could do was like I could speak basketball. So that's how I cool. you know, was able to connect with a lot of like still friends that you know, at a very young age, because I was like, if I can dribble, if I can shoot, like basketball was my jam, you know? Yeah. I had hoop dreams that obviously ended pretty quickly as you figure out how tall people really are and how talented and, and the amount of work that you need to put in. But um, you know, that was definitely my go-to basketball and boxing during cool. that time. Yeah, that's kind of like where my hoops dreams died. It was like five eleven, <laughs> looking at the NBA, and I'm like, "Yo, Steve Nash looks kind of short." Nah, he's six <laughs> three. I mean, five eleven is huge in the Philippines. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. And um, so you know, that was from seven, probably all the way until high school. You were playing ball. Yeah. And um, you know, from elementary school to high school, what was what was that experience like? Yeah, like it, yeah. in terms of sports. Or a little just bit in of general, yeah, just more of like a cultural, like um, you know, you're at high school. What's the high school environment like? The high school environment. Yeah. I mean, I I pretty much had a probably a different experience of high school. Like I loved high school, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of the times, you know, what we e- even during the pandemic, like what I we started to realize, even because my wife works at a high school, um, Carrie, she she's supporting a lot of high school students and mm-hmm. and what what we always knew and what we and what we discovered is as much as i hated high school like to a certain degree like it was actually the place that was like consistent and it was a place where i had like people Mm -hmm. to look up to yeah i didn't want to do that much homework yeah i didn't really want to be in class necessarily but i had consistent group of friends that i could you know count on there was like a regular time of day to be there and there's people that like look for you and actually care if you show up yeah so high school was like in a way actually like a safe place for me because I was like living on my own right so the basketball team became right. that even though you know and people on the, the the high school team would attest to this I actually got cut uh when I tried out for the grade 10 team because I would never show up to practice mm. and uh and the reason why is most of the kids knew the reason why I couldn't show up to practice because I always had to work yeah so the the coach was just like so mad at me he's like you know I'm gonna cut you but you know, thankfully the the team actually voted like to have me back in. I think somebody secretly told them like my my living situation. Yeah. Because I would you know always come in at six a.m. and you know do the workouts and stuff. The janitor would let me in because uh, it was a the safe place for me to be. But you know, for me, high school was that actual place where it was like I said, it was consistent. There was adults there that I that I could look up to, and there's friends. Summer when summer came around, it was obviously like a great joy, but a lot of my friends left. Yep. And then you get to realize when you're quiet again, when there's no one around, like, damn. It's a bit like, of a void. Yeah, it's a bit of a void for sure. Mm-hmm. And then the season's over, right? And then you're just left to your own devices doing doing what y'all do in the teenage years. Yep. Yeah. Getting into lots of trouble and all that good stuff. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I've, I've always thought that, like, you know, sports has been my outlet when it comes to a sense of community and all that. And I, I've always wondered, like, how do people get through that, like, high school scenario without it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, there's so many things you can get into. And, um, you know, there wasn't, where I grew up, there wasn't particular, um, particularly heavy amount of, like, gang life and those sorts of things. But there was still trouble to get into. Yeah. And I see the path that a lot of, you know, the people that were in my circle but not competing in, like, sport kind of fell into. And mm-hmm. it, it could have been that easy for myself even to, yeah. like, get, go into those places. So, like, I guess with the high school transition um coming from you know you're in a space where you're living on your own yeah and you are now done with um basketball yeah um season's over what are you exposed to and like what is the most dangerous thing in your perspective the most dangerous thing i mean uh, for sure like idleness right not having you know the the space to just be busy and not busy in a bad way like right now i have a a 10 year old son who you know is not in the age to like join like a high school team yet or obviously like a school team but he's you know we we bring him into so many like camps and teams outside of school that he's just so busy and and has different you know friends outside of school but i didn't have camps when i was growing up it was just like you go to the local hoop if there's someone that's there like um you know you, you play with those people. If not, you're just shooting hoops by yourself. So yep. 
um, I think with that like idleness and not having anything to do, you just you know your mind wanders and you you I ended up like just hanging out with people that I shouldn't be hanging out with, um, even if they were you know they needed the support as well. Like we just didn't have that like parental figure to like let us know, hey maybe you shouldn't like be doing this. Right. right. I definitely like after I transitioned from like high school team, like I joined like a box a local boxing gym, and that's really that got me. Like kind of more of an a straighter narrow path because with boxing is it's such a boring sport that if you don't like it um you're not going to be there for very long mm -hmm. and that discipline was what i learned to like then try to apply to my life right because in order to get better you got to be so focused on the details be focused like be in the gym all the time and listen to older people that i think i started to like apply that and that in itself after high school kept me in a way like in, in, a, in a straighter path right and yeah. so uh like to add to that, like, would you say that all, you know, high school or like youth need sport? Yeah. yeah. I think they need something, right? I think they need um, a, a way to simulate struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's through the arts, to me, it was like through sport, right? Because there's, you know, in, in a positive, healthy way, like, in my opinion, you got to learn how to like lose struggle and, and have discipline and then like find moments of joy. Right, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, I think I found that in sports, perhaps you did the same thing, but I think that's a really great way to teach that form of resiliency, and then you know whether you got knocked down to like work harder to have more discipline to like come back stronger. But I think without that, you know, those tools are it's almost like a muscle. You don't have that muscle growing up, so you don't know when someone, you know, you get turned down by, you know, at a job interview, like you don't know, like oh, I got to work harder and you know, come back even stronger, right? Mm -hmm. So I think in a way, it's kind of a metaphor for life and, and an opportunity to, to learn resilience. Cool. Yeah. And so, like, later on into this journey, you're leaving high school. Yes. Um, what kind of transitions are made there? Like, what did you think was going to go down and what <laughs> actually went down? What did I think? Um, honestly, I didn't really think too far ahead like I, I definitely dabbled in boxing martial arts which um it, you know the boxing community although it's it's a really great trustworthy or you know positive community there's also like a, a shadow side of it right mm -hmm. of like you know people that like are part-time bodyguards part-time working at bars and then you know you you know, I kind of dabbled into like hanging out with those guys a little bit until I figured out like, okay, I'm, I'm a little bit too young to, to be hanging out with these right. guys. So I think it wasn't like such a easy like path to understand like, okay, I'm learning something that I could translate into like, now I want to work with young people. Mm -hmm. I just kind of came into it in, um, in a really... I, I, was, I guess it's, it's in a hard way, right? Like I don't want to learn these lessons but you know there's a lot of things that i had to learn on my own and then started to realize like no one else was teaching this stuff mm. so i had to just you know kind of do my own studies and then find the right like uh leaders to help me like along the way right so i definitely didn't have a path i knew what i wanted to feel mm -hmm. i wanted to you know feel passionate about my work i definitely didn't want to like do the the regular nine to five never wanted to like tuck in my shirt or wear a tie yeah absolutely no offense to people that do that it's just for me like it's kind of uncomfortable i want it to be myself you can see me right now wearing a t-shirt like i want to show my skin i want to show my tattoos to to represent that like it doesn't have to be a certain way right, right. so hmm. yeah i would say it's 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 might not be the right way, but I, did, I would say, like, there was no exact plan. Yeah. I just knew, like, hey, I want to work with young people, so what do I need to do to, like, support them? And then, you know, kind of follow follow each door as it opens. Awesome. Yeah. So what was that, like, first step for you then? Like, for the first step? Was it, like, a course or? Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, my, my mother, she worked at um, Vancouver Coastal Health Authority, right? So cool. she would, um, she was, um. She's kind of like an admin assistant or worked a lot with doctors. And she would just like email me like random jobs through through the portal. Mm. And I would always just laugh. And the first job, I don't think anybody like I've ever said this, but the first job that I ever had was like uh, to teach like safe sex workshops at the high schools. Interesting. And this is what I was like 18 years old, like still learning this stuff. And in a way she wanted to 
me to learn it because she didn't want to talk about that stuff. So yeah. in a way, she's like, probably like you should learn about this stuff, but also it's a really good job. And so like mm. I would travel all across like Vancouver and Richmond, Lower Mainland to teach like eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth, eleventh, twelfth about obviously different things when you're in grade eight and grade twelve. Talked mm. about you know more conversational about gender and and consent for grade twelves. And in grade eight, it was about healthy relationships and you know. This is what a condom looks like. This is what, how to put it on, on right. like a, a demonstrator. Um, but yeah, f- I think from there, because it's such a small kind of a field, once I started to hone my, my skills in facilitating and like coming to a room where I knew nobody cared about what I was saying, because yeah. I was in high school too. Every time there was a speaker, I'm like, who's this person? Like, right. I'm not listening to you. My teacher's not here. I'm just going to wild out and ask the wildest thing. So in my mind, I knew, okay, I'm coming in as a facilitator, as a speaker. I'm still kind of young. I know what people are talking about. So I had that as my advantage when right. I was coming in a classroom because I was showing up like authentically who I was. Mm-hmm. And then I started to like craft like, okay, this is how I say something. This is like a good joke. This is the way to like, you know, land a really great point without it being like corny. Yeah. And so from that, it just had like positive um, affirmation that like this is what I'm supposed to do right for this moment which led me to other opportunities within that same field which now I still proudly am able to still do that at work right I'll have opportunities to facilitate or be in front of people to you know shift minds related to not obviously sex anymore right, right? that was a different time but related to like social impact and awareness but I think that conversation of sex is like one of the most uncomfortable spaces for that kid that's, you know, 16 to 18 or younger. So like to be able to tap in on that level with them about topics like that, everything else comes like maybe even easier, you know? Yes. And so like, that's the biggest challenge. And once you realize you have that skill, like it opens up the door for so much more. Absolutely. Yeah. I think what's, what's that old saying? Um, resistance is uh, fertile but like the flip of that is uh yeah i'm sorry the actual saying is resistant is futile but mm-hmm. the flip of that is how i approach a facilitation is resistance is fertile which mm-hmm. is because somebody is a young person is resisting you know learning from somebody there's actually i should focus it even more because that resistance there's something there right the person that you want to kick out of the classroom because they're so annoying they want to disrupt the classroom it's actually the person that needs it the most right because i was that kid i was that kid that's like just wanted to say something to be funny often just sent to the hallway to sit and just for a moment but what people didn't know or maybe the teachers knew was like i don't even have parents at home i don't even live at home like i love being at school i've just i'm just getting kicked out all the time Mm -hmm. of the classroom and like that yeah. yeah like deep down it's like it's definitely something that resonates with you maybe even more than the other absolutely and, and yeah. your response to it is very uncomfortable yes so you act out in a certain way yeah that's, yeah, that's so interesting yeah um so I, I i see that being like a great transition to um where i met you you were mm. working uh with um the varsity initiative it was yes. called yes. right and this was like if you if you can explain a little bit about that yeah uh, varsity is um i mean the idea of varsity is like it's the top tier of like high school sport right Mm -hmm. and so um the program that i created um was just an opportunity for young people to access health and wellness through like at that time crossfit or lifting weights Mm -hmm. where you know it was always kind of just given to folks or people that played sports but i said like but this is such a great thing to feel good about yourself which then translates mentally so i wanted to provide a space for anyone young people who kind of hated pe but also wanted to you know expose themselves to more like that training and so i created that space to say like this is for you to like heighten up your physical abilities to get better in conditioning to get better in strength but also be not only be potentially first string in whatever sport or dance you're doing but also first string in life right once you are outside of sports how do you do that and so essentially it was a vehicle to be to have the space to be able to to talk to young people and, and guide them in a different way, mm-hmm. right? It was the icebreaker to the actual conversation. And what was cool was like, in, in a way, it's kind of bad for business, but when a young person doesn't show up, you kind of have to smile because they're like, oh, they're good. 
hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of times wh- who was showing up at first was like people who really needed support. Something was going on at home. Something was going on at school. But then when they didn't show up and, and they show up like a month later, they're like, oh, actually, like I wasn't there because this was happening in my life. I got a mm-hmm. job. Something positive happened. And in a way, I had to smile to be like, right. when they're not here, it means like they're using the, the skills that they had to like um elevate themselves in the community yeah they're growing yeah it's like a silent win of course you want people to show up you want as many people to attend and and their parents to pay for for the sessions but when they don't show up i'm like man i hope they're doing well yeah yeah like outside of um like the fitness aspect of it was there like conversations oh yeah like so you're breaking down like what kinds of things like what do you talk about i mean it's as simple as i think the fitness was uh the icebreaker Mm -hmm. because what often like even as a parent right now right it's really hard to to gain that trust and that vulnerability like when you really need it and to me it's like built brick by brick like day by day so i shouldn't have to like i shouldn't have to like find a moment with my kid to say like oh i want to have this this talk yeah about what's happening in the community about what's happening to like people of color about what happening like what's happening related to like you know sexuality right mm-hmm. but if i can build that type of vulnerability like brick by brick day by day then that conversation should just be easier and it's not as awkward because parents are awkward yep. right older people in quotations are awkward so i just saw that opportunity using varsity as that tool to like on a monday break something up ask them a question like just start to like create like avenues for conversation even if it's ridiculous even if we're just dissecting like the new asap album and then at the same time like when something does happen in the community where often something does happen big they already have those lines of communication open that you know they're open and vulnerable enough to say like this is what i need i need your support or can we just talk about this Mm -hmm. but it didn't have to be like a big town hall in the community right it was just like you know we are we're here no matter what what do you want to talk about today? And if it's about music, it's music, but it's about, you know, violence that's happening in school. Like it's the same, it's the same trust. Hmm. Yeah. And then, um, you know, another like venture of yours, I, I guess that would be like the next step for you. Yeah. Guys. I think, um, you partnered with Ali Maz, who we actually had on the podcast as well. Oh, you and did? She was, yeah. She was talking about, um, girl Vanna. Yes. And that seems to be like the yin and the yang, like with what you're doing in terms of a little bit more female focused, yep. um, but using like yoga mm-hmm. in t- uh, as a facilitator for like empowerment yes. and you guys come together and you build like a brick and mortar space, yeah. which was like the district. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the notorious or notorious isn't the right word. The, um, feature class would be the crush hush, the crush which hush. is where I was first introduced to the district. And yeah. it's a, it's a class where, you know, you go in, you have your yoga then, or sorry, your, your, your fitness, your hit, or, you know, the, a, a med ball workout that'll just kick your ass for 30 minutes you leave yeah. the space and it's a complete change of vibe there's a sense of community there's kombucha there's beer and then you come back into the space the music's changed the vibes change the lighting's change and and it's yoga now yeah. and it's, it's such a blend of cultures you know yeah um i don't think there's a, a many spaces before i could go and you know, take a yoga class and not feel out of place yeah. being like, you know, the only black guy in the room or <laughs> the only person wearing normal shorts and not tights. And so yes. this space was like, you know, bringing someone like me who's totally fitness oriented into a space where I feel comfortable doing yoga and yeah. I can get it, like be more vulnerable in that space. And I see like, you know, a common ground. I think that is where the Varsity Initiative and like the Girl Banner came together originally like maybe to build that space for that. And then yeah. you kind of realize, well, that same thing applies to like the adult space. Yes. If yes. you can speak on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the crush is the varsity and the hush is Gravana. And, and the reality is it's like, yeah, the, the, it is a yin, yin and yang, but together they kind of form that like that that class, but also that space, which is the district. And I think um, it's it wasn't that like when we built a brick and mortar, like all of a sudden we're not focused on young people. The side gig was young people, or that actually was the gig. Everything else was a side gig. Cause we realized like, first and foremost, the place that I was teaching at um, before we even opened the district. I mean, every time I taught a class, the music 
that they played, I was like, yo, no, I don't want to listen to this, you know, music. And no disrespect, everyone's, you know, entitled to their own, like, taste, but yeah. I just didn't feel like myself. And then there was, like, one pivotal moment where um, I had my varsity young people, kids, like, working out, and and, and uh, one of the, like, young women, like, she, she like, took off her T-shirt. She was still wearing, like, a, a sports bra. Mm-hmm. And then the owner came up to me afterwards, like, hey, man, like, I don't really feel comfortable, like, you know, these young people, like, young woman, like, expressing herself like that and i'm like what like what first off like why are you thinking about it in that way right the same time he's talking to me like there's a whole bunch of like adults with their shirts off like lifting weights yeah and so like i knew then and there like there was like there was something missing in this person's understanding because i'm like these young people don't have a safe space where they can just be who they are yeah i'm not saying you should wear clothes or take clothes off and just this person felt comfortable enough to express themselves because they were, you know, they were too sweaty. So they removed an article of clothing. Yeah. But then in my mind, I'm like, okay, this adult like was being weird. Yeah. About doesn't it, see right? it. And so somewhere. I just really like strange that in itself, like got to me to this idea of like, well, the young people need their own space as well, yeah. where they can express themselves, listen to the music that they want to listen to. And then, and then we started to realize Ali and I, like, there's no age to this. Right. Mm. Like youth is a mentality, youth is a way of being, and of course you still got to be responsible and you know um, take care of your family and your business. But there's a certain like uh, youthfulness that wasn't being um, there wasn't like being fed in even the adults in the community where they 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 didn't have a space to express themselves whether through movement through yoga or just like arts or voice or music. And that's mm-hmm. what District became, right? And Crush Hush a was... A blend of all that. Yeah, yeah, a blend of all of that where, you know, so a, a person like maybe yourself like wouldn't see themselves doing yoga and doing those poses, but you can do it if there's Kendrick Lamar in the background or there's Erica Badu, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and same thing with like fitness, right? You can definitely... Um, it's easier to work out in, you know, fast paced, like up tempo hip hop beats, but vice versa. Like, can we add some like other jams to it? Like, you know, um, we used to bring in like artists to like play during like the yoga class, right? Just a different blend where you, people started to see themselves even in the studio more than like what we saw it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I think one of the techniques that sticks out the most is um, the check in questions. Yes. Um, if you could speak on like what what's your intention behind like the check-in question the check-in question i mean honestly that just that's just our training from like young people right it's Mm. it's truly an icebreaker but it's probably became bigger than an icebreaker because it became something that you know in in those classes like people didn't really people were caught off guard because if you're going to a gym you're often just like going and taking your classes and then you're leaving to a certain degree yes people say how do you in the front desk but the checking question gave you an opportunity just to stop you know your tracks and just connect with people Mm -hmm. even if you don't align with some of people's answers from as silly as like what you know name two movies combined that represent your week thus far it's just another opportunity to get like deeper into like what's going on for people this week because it's if it's, you know, Dune slash 21 Jump Street, I kind of know, okay, like, yeah. it's been a hard week for this person, and they kind of want a little bit of levity as well, like some lightness. Yeah. So it just gave me as a teacher a gauge of people's energy and, like, what they were needing, and then I could translate that into the workout and the music they didn't need to hear, right? Because if somebody said, you know, a, a specific type of movie, I would secretly find a soundtrack play a move uh, play a song from that movie during it without anyone even knowing and that became part of the the workout and that one person that said it is like yo that's dope that you actually played that because yeah. i'm like i remember right and it adds that little uh, a lot more of a human element instead of just playing a regular playlist and just checking people in like we used to have like a mm-hmm. one of those kind of beeping things in the front desk where you would put your card in and it would beep you and sign you in but we're like Honestly, we got rid of it because I'm like, why can't we just remember people's names? Right. right? Why can't we just check people in manually? I mean, it's going to be harder, but like the human aspect will then disappear if we, 
you know, we don't take the time to like get to know people. Yeah, it becomes fitness world. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So, and that's that not what we wanted, right? So I think the check-in truly was a check-in, like to each and every one. And some people hated it. Yeah. And and we knew right away, not that they're not invited. We knew right away, like, hey, well, there's other places for you, but mm-hmm. this is also why we created the studio. And if you're not down, no disrespect, there's other places, but in here, this is how we get down. Yeah. It's interesting, like when I first came and I got the check-in question, uh, anytime, anything fitness related, I always thought it was so competitive. Mm-hmm. You know, as an athlete, I'm just like, you know, like, I'm going to this class, like I can't have somebody beat me in the class or yeah. whatever it was. And so to have that check-in question was kind of that, yes. like, okay, like it's not that serious. Like I'm here to, and I, I got to just enjoy my workout more yes. and like take more of like, you know, the music in and like just really enjoy the the full experience rather than just like get the workout in yes. and win the ribbon or whatever yeah so, exactly um I, and i think that was for a lot of people maybe it wasn't the competitive aspect but that like you know sense of community at the beginning of and end brought like a different vibe yes. than a lot of like studios and gyms and absolutely so. yeah that's what we wanted to create i mean the workout we still wanted it to be good yeah. um e- even i would say even if we had the studio today like i would probably approach fitness in in such a different way like more holistically after you know after spending a lot of time at home now like i don't always need like the destroy me type workout which i loved in the Mm -hmm. beginning of district like trying to add more like actually what you brought which is like mobility and movement and you know specific things that like um you know i just i'm falling in love with more even now Mm -hmm. right yeah and then um, I think along like the same sort of timeline is when you started working with Lululemon. Yes. Um, probably like on more of like a contracting capacity and a lot of team building activities and working with ambassadors. Can you speak about like yeah. that role a little bit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I um, it's interesting because nothing about my how I facilitated change, no matter like how old the person was. Obviously, there's. You got to get the gig first. There's professionality. There's building a, a workshop, building a weekend retreat, right? Mm-hmm. But once we start, I started to partner with Lululemon and they started to bring me in to do like a team building workshop or a, a DNI diversity and inclusion workshop, mm-hmm. I think what people started to realize was like how tough conversations can have levity in it and how levity can also be like a form of like, you know, um, vulnerability as well mm. and that's what i had taken and learned from working with young people that it can't just you can't just hit people over the head with it we're all human there has to be grace applied that we're all learning at the same time so yeah. i think that type of style in doing that work like really you know took off with the every kind of gig that i got every team that i worked with and that's where i just started to get pulled in more to work with not just young people lemon right but like mm the specific parts of the brand like the men's team for example mm-hmm. like there's a certain like year where i just would get sent to a sports team you know whether it's the dodgers or the sacramento kings or the la rams because i had a way of speaking that was well, that wasn't that's just how i spoke how i'm yeah. speaking into this mic right now which made it more relatable to the young people who aren't talking yoga all the time and no offense if that's how you talk Right. That's how Ali Mass talks. But like, that's not how I would consume knowledge, wisdom and, and levity. Yeah. And so that's not how I would teach it as well. Mm-hmm. And so that's where the like we started to align more that like, hey, man, like I have a skill in facilitating that I think would be really useful for the team development part of that business. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it, it like there's there's so much value on both sides is obviously having like the support and the resources that like a company like lululemon can provide to be able to like expand your reach in that space but then like for them it's like you're bringing such a different image and look with the same grace of like other employees and you know um first time meeting you like um not knowing your affiliation to like i just thought it's just cool man like (laughs) you got great style cool tattoos sick fade and then to know like that you're so deep within a space like that i'm like man they hire people like (laughs) you know and 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 that that is ignorance of me right but i I think that a lot of companies like do kind of fall short on that and like 
Lululemon is probably one of the most innovative when it comes to being really conscious of like the culture that they're building like internally. And yeah. I know like um, you're definitely at the helm of that right now, like with what you're currently doing. Um, in in those spaces, like you said, like the you know whether it's working with youth or whether it's working with pro athletes, the approach is kind of the same. Like, what is that approach like when you're on the retreats? Like on the retreat, yeah. uh, I think. Yeah, there's a, the formula is, of course, um, there's a certain theme that we want to like get out of the weekend, right? Mm-hmm. But I think overall the formula to me, and it's because I've tried it on myself, it's what I like. It's overall what we did at the district was, to me, it's collective struggle in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then through that collective struggle, which is often like a hard workout mm-hmm. to the point where you're just like, I don't want to continue. But because you're experiencing it with a whole bunch of people, you you automatically um, create this like fast bond that you experience it together, yeah. which trickles into the dinner, which trickles into the next part, right? And it almost like that collective struggle, aka the workout, opens people up to like be vulnerable, and then you can insert you know more things that are are, are deeper, yeah. right? And so to me, that I've learned from like working previously with teaching even safe sex workshops to working with young people that you need something to bond with to experience something together and then from there it just builds and builds so i think for me it's it's about collective struggle it's about levity it's about depth for sure and then always having grace to to ensure that i'm not pushing too hard because everyone arrives at the same time so meeting people where they're at and then speaking in a way that you know or speaking in a way also offering things in the weekend or in the day that I personally would do on my own as well, right? Mm-hmm. I would never do anything that I wouldn't personally do myself. So if I create this workout of the district, I'm doing it too. Yeah. Right? I'm struggling too, and I'll make it harder on myself. If I'm making you do a trust activity, damn sure I, I would actually do this myself, or I have done this myself yeah. in a different way, and I've just translated it into like, essentially for me, making it cooler, right? The, you know, whatever cool is means for any, everyone else, but. You know, I, I make sure that I, if I'm going to offer something, like I would have done it myself. So to me, that's the template, right? Collective struggle, authenticity, levity, depth, and then making sure that like I'm never giving anything to anyone that I wouldn't do myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. And obviously, he's a huge sports fan. Like I'm always yes. just like so like enthralled by like some of the people you get to meet. And, yeah. Most notably, like, Jordan Clarkson, huge basketball fan. Yes. Right? So, like, seeing you work with, like, the Utah Jazz, and, like, the Rams and things like that. It's, like, yeah. the coolest thing ever. Um, moving on to, like, I guess, like, your most recent, like, title, which is, like, IDEA. Mm-hmm. And I know what it stands for. It's yeah. inclusion, it's diversity, it's equity, and it's action. Yes. Um, how did that come to be? Like, is that, like... It must be like a new position. Yes. And we're we're in a space right now that is like highly sensitive, and um, you know there's a strong push by you know the corporate world to consider like have more consideration and yeah. look internally into like how to you know inspire change like long lasting change and um, you know how does that come to be like within Lululemon? Yeah. And like, what is kind of your day to day now? Day to day, yeah. yeah that's day to day is different every day. But I think what's what people, well, most people don't didn't know that prior to district, like my studies, my work was related to like diversity and inclusion, right? Mm-hmm. And so I did work a lot in high schools to, you know, talk about racism, anti oppression, and, and do it in a way that's like for the young people that I was working with, cool. Yeah. Right. Um, and not cool that like it has to be cool, but like for me, I wanted to engage the person that wanted to skip the class because the person that is going to skip the class who assumes racism doesn't matter to them, that's who I want. Yeah. I don't want anyone like, no disrespect, like if you already care about it, you're on board. Right. And so that's where this, I started to like hone in on like, okay, how do I talk about this in a way that's inviting, but also like will challenge you once you step into the the conversation and i think for for my current job right now like of course like there's there was always was like a a part of blue lemon because that's where i got brought in to start to work related to diversity and inclusion but it wasn't until 2020 where we made like 
a bit even bigger commitment to make systemic like change to support you know everything inclusion diversity and equity right mm-hmm. because you can talk about it but like the a part is the most important is like what are we actually doing to support representation equity inclusion right a lot of people will say we want to change the representation of our company which is amazing but if there's nothing once they get hired for them to actually stay then they're not going to be here in the long run right right S- similar to the district i can market it back in the day saying hey dom hey gian like we we encourage everyone to come here everyone's invited but the moment that they walk in there there's not there's no music that, that people actually like that metaphor of like you can you can invite me to a party but if there's no music that i would actually like listen to or dance yeah. with to you might as well not invite me right, right? and so really that's what we saw as an opportunity it was like yeah like we can focus on diversity but what's the action in yeah. actually creating the necessary systemic change both externally to what we put out there into to the world but just as important internally how we interact with each other like within the offices right yeah kind of reflecting on um just like your background and stuff like prior to this interview i looked at like the word idea yeah. and like action really stood out to me i think that's like a differentiator right yeah. it's like everybody's talking about diversity and inclusion right now yes and it's like a big buzzword in the space but like who is actively looking at like, how do they change their space so that that person feels comfortable? Yes. And, like, I'm, I'm noticing a trend, too, in, like, you know, you're talking about that one person that doesn't want to have that diversity talk is, like, that person I'm going after. Or that kid that's, like, skipping the class is the one I want to target. It's, like, the transformative change is in getting that, like, leader yeah. or what have you in that space to kind of change their mindset. Because yeah. like a lot of people are following that group. Yeah. Right. That's where that power is. Yeah. And and Lululemon's such a powerful brand, um, impactful brand in Vancouver, right? So why not like be part of the change in that culture, right? Absolutely. And so sticking it out and, and knowing that there's great people within the company and the brand is doing really well and it's done well prior to like even me being there, but realizing that the, the opportunity to create even more change beyond the product is so great. So that's where it, what inspired me to like continue to stay on and you know help create what now is the idea team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like obviously there's a level of like confidentiality involved, mm-hmm. but just in terms of like you know with regards to product and brand, yeah. like what are some like things that you had to break down or like kind of reevaluate within the space? Yeah, I wouldn't even say it's like, you know, confidential. It's it's in terms of product, it's not even that like I'm going in there and creating um like some sort of like DNI product, like this yeah. new shirt or new pants. Of course, there's always like an innovative team that's like up on things that want to innovate to re- represent or to be able to represent the the community, right? right? But to me, it's making sure that we, you know, you we hire people that are coming from different places, not always looking at the same like pool of talent. And whatever they bring, whatever that person brings, whatever the next GN brings, has the same amount of space to be followed through, right? The same amount of budget as anyone else. Hmm. Right. So whatever that person creates because they feel welcomed is idea. Got gotcha. you. Right. Yep. What and it doesn't even have to do anything with DNI. It's just everyone's voice is at the table. And everyone's voice has power and equity. And so within that culture, whatever they create is the is the action that is created. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? It does, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, daily routines. <laughs> so like, you know, you wake up in the morning. Yes. Um, probably a lot of work from home right now. All work from yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes, like what's what's that like? Yeah, yes, it's been a it's kind of been a struggle because, you know, like. I think there was a point where you're just waiting for things to open up or things to change. Yeah, and so, I think banking on things to go back to normal was like detriment to like my own physical and mental health, Mm -hmm. because you're just waiting for the, for things to change and for things to get better. And and it wasn't until actually like the second year where I was like, it doesn't matter if things get like 
more open or, or get better in quotations like i just have to like take care of myself so like a daily routine on a good day because not every day is the same yep. on like a day that i actually plan starts with like me planning out my day the night before right so planning out you know my schedule making sure i have time to like you know take my dog for a walk um because now that i don't have that morning commute and, and afternoon commute i have to still make a point to like put on pants Mm -hmm. right because there's moments there's months where i'm just like i don't really need to put on pants yeah. i could just stay off video the whole time totally. but then mentally it, it you know if my if i don't see the sun or even if it's raining like it's just it was messing with my mind because i would just be staying in one room so i had to like make a point to say like okay for this half an hour it's still my morning commute right i'm still just gonna go walk my dog a dog was obviously something that i never had in my life so that was like a savior to like to be forced to go outside no matter what the weather was mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon still have a afternoon commute which could be a podcast even if i never left my neighborhood yeah like strategically planning those in and then definitely because of the intensity of the work sometimes i just needed moments to like move or do mobility work which i found like even though like lululemon is all about fitness and, and wellness uh, I was still finding it finding it hard to actually do a workout. Yeah. Even though I had a garage and a boxing bag, and at the end of the day, uh, or you know, in my house, to find an hour to like actually work out was like getting hard, mm. because work was like right there on my phone, right? Yeah. And people were just being able like were able to message me anytime. So what I found was, you know, in the past six months, what's been like a really good unlock is just planning on my day where I can work out for 15 minutes. Like I could plan on an hour workout, but then chop it up into like mini workouts yeah. throughout the day. Cool. And that's just like changed the game for me because I still move. It forces me to move, but I don't have to have the stress of like, I need an hour. Yeah. Which is just built into my system of like, I need an hour to get a good sweat in, but actually chopping it up throughout the day is just like made like a huge shift in like just how I feel all day. Cool. Right. Obviously I'm working in between all those workouts, not just about working out, but you know, working out, standing up as much as I can and then taking breaks on purpose. There's just, it's just cool. Yeah. You know, absolutely. There, you could have that creative like direction even in your workouts, which is dope. Um, when you think of like recovery, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think of it as like foam rolling, stretching. Like, yeah. what? How do you see? Obviously, there's like a mental side to it too. Uh, like, how do you see your recovery? And like, what methods do you choose to lean on for recovery? Recovery. I mean, I probably ha should have a better answer, uh, knowing that this is about health and and wellness. But um, I tried the foam roller thing. Kind of took forever. Uh, I wasn't patient with it. Hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. yeah, I think for me it's about like um, what I eat is like a big part of my recovery. Yep. So like water is weird. Obviously, that's what everyone says. You should drink more, but I didn't like realize how <laughs> how uh, that actually affects a lot of like how I think in my recovery. So Absolutely. definitely, what I consume. Uh, I definitely should get better in my sleeping, but that's that's a hard thing to do. I always have like a mindset of like sleep later, sleep when you die yeah. um, type situation. But I think if I had more time, it would be great to have more sleep. And truthfully, right now, it's not, not to make it sound like so basic, but just getting my mind off work, getting my mind off like pressure and, and um, the stress of like everyday life. And the way that I do that is like through playing video games yeah you know cool. playing um like 2k and just like disappearing for a moment but just keeping my mind still active but just disappearing for like 45 minutes and then coming back recharged it's almost my afternoon commute let me just play this one game i'm playing this season jordan clarkson averaging 20 averaging 27 points a game undefeated mm -hmm. utah jazz is my team on nba um 2k and then just having that moment to just pause also a moment for like levity and fun and laughter and then coming coming back to you know family life regular life mm -hmm. you know and that's also an opportunity for me to connect with my son because we both play together right so it's almost like a way to tap back into joy tap back into family life outside of work so you know the the health and wellness answer for sure is food nutrition all of that uh walking i found like even just 
focusing, you know, treating a rest day like a, a workout itself, mm -hmm. right? Like treating like I'm going to just destroy like making this food. Like I'm just going to be so on yeah. point and just like shop and eat the best that I can. Like in my mind, like it, it's just a shift to be like, I'm going to kill it, this yeah. food right now. And it's going to be awesome. And that actually, cool. you know, when I consume it, I'm like, it totally recharges me for the next day as opposed to be like, man, like I don't want to take a rest day. Cause that's always been like, even at the district, we had this like no days off, no days off, mm -hmm. which you know, is like, it's not sustainable. No. Right. So now when I actually lean into like, no, you don't have to take a day off, but like focusing on something else is still a day on, but it helps me physically because I get to get, get excited about when I do get to move again. Yeah, it's like quantity or quality over quantity, yeah. right? You got to be productive. And if you have no energy, you're not productive. You're most productive self. Yeah. Kind of just going through the motions. Yes. Um, this is a, without being too intrusive, okay. I've been asking everybody this question. is like, okay. what can we find in your house that you can't find in other people's? Whoa. Or that, yeah. <laughs> that you can't find in other people's? Well, it's not common. Yeah. You know? Hmm. That is an interest. That's a that's a check in question. Mm. Holy, um, I mean, it's probably. I mean, I have a boxing bag in my garage. That's probably common for people. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I read a lot of like poetry. Interesting. Which is uh, would seem like uncommon to me. Yeah. Like uh, instead of like the daily stoic or the the typical kind of health and wellness, you know, journey or books, I make it a point to read like one poem a day as like a, cool. a check. Cause to me, yes, I can get my workout in, I can get the right food in, but like I make it a daily effort to like read one poem mm. to just like set my day straight. Right. And so right now I'm reading a lot of like, um, I don't know if it's the right term, but like per this Persian poet named Hafiz, Okay. And so he talks about a lot about like obviously God and religion and 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 love, uh, all in the context of love. And so one one poem a day. Cool. Yeah, it's right at my desk before I log into work. I'm like, what's it today? It may land. It may make completely no sense, but it's a part of my day that I'm like, I need to get this out. Awesome. Yeah. Um, phrase association. What's that? There's a little like phrase association okay, yeah, exercise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of want like a description of like the following things. Okay. Um, all of which I think um, you've used mm -hmm. in either your spaces or just life mottos, yeah. etc. Um, the first being stay true. Yes. Stay true. Yeah. What, are, what just, is it? Just like, what does that mean to you? Stay true means unapologetic no no filter and um just sticking with your i don't want to say guns i feel like that's a the wrong thing to <laughs> to use but just sticking to your your values cool yeah stay true stay true uh waves don't die waves don't die yeah waves don't die means being open to the constant like flow and change of life it's always there, um, but it's inevitable. It's a, change is inevitable, mm. so just surf, ride the wave. <laughs> ride the wave, exactly. Cool. Um, youthful and revolt. Youthful and revolt. Yes, it's it's the uh, the life energy that I approach every single conversation, even how I raise my kids and how I approach work has to have that like youthfulness and, and levity because that to me um, joy is the most important thing and being um, persistent and consistent in finding joy in everything that I do is the representation of youthful in, revol in revolt. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And then this is like our checkout question. Okay. Is like if you could live in any movie, Ooh. which would it be and why? damn okay everybody's like you should have told me this before so I'm <laughs> stupid. these are hard questions yeah. ah man hmm if i could live in any movie 
you got to stay in that movie. You can't. Uh... Yeah, we won't hold you to it. You might be able to change it later on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... I mean, right now, honestly, it, this is completely random and probably not what people would expect of me. But um, um, Family Stone. <laughs> it's a movie it's like a christmas movie okay um and not that it's like the best movie in the world but actually my, my daughter's name comes from that movie it's uh cool. everett yep. and so i'm gonna break the rules and and have it be coach carter and and family stone those two movies like wrapped up together cool and that's where my kids names come from so carter is from coach carter everett oh. who is a character in the movie Fa- family stone that i met that i um watch on a yearly basis with my wife mm. um and we said that we like that name no matter the gender of our kid like we're gonna name it name them everett her everett and that's that's who she is right now that's awesome so, yeah so family mm. movie but also basketball movie that's what i'm at that's what i am sweet yes um i said that was a checkout question <laughs> i got i got another question for yes. you is um like what are you currently in the process of learning what am I currently in the process of learning? Yeah. On this, in my mind, I haven't had a time to do it. I want to learn how to like, like, cut people's hair, mm. like be a barber. Okay. But that's probably that's just on my own side gig. So then, I'm like preparing for another quarantine so I can cut my hair. I can cut yeah. my hair, and from front facing view, it looks good. But from the back, mm. it Working looks progress. horrendous. <laughs> so maybe I just I'm just preparing for the next quarantine. So. On a side gig, I'm preparing. You know, I want to teach myself that, but I I think I wanna I wanna write I wanna write more, right? I don't I don't think I have a goal of like writing a book. That's what people always ask me. Like, mm-hmm. I just I just want to write and just have that even be a part of my day instead of, you know, instead of the boxing bag in my garage. Like to me, like writing is also like a mental boxing bag mm-hmm. that I want to utilize more. So I want to. Cool. At the same time, read, but also write just as much. Awesome. Yeah, so I want to learn how to do that even better. Well, best of luck with both of those. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, no, this this podcast has been incredibly valuable. I Thank think you. to everybody listening, and it's always good times just having conversation with you, someone I look up to, and you know, it's inspiring to you know hear like your consistent like effort and and what you give to the community on a regular basis. I hope that. Um, I can catch one of your fitness classes soon. Absolutely. And I'm that, back. you know, everything that's happening with Lululemon, your family is just prosperous and continues to be. Yes. You know, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks Talk for too. asking.